Here we go. We don't have an intro, right? We kind of do. Welcome to downtown. Yeah, Motown. welcome to downtown off, Motown. And you say off, I say yeah. line. Yeah, that's it. Okay, three, two, one. Welcome, welcome to, to downtown, downtown Moon Town. Off line. Here we are. <laughs> oh, look at us. Us yeah. and the clowns. I know. It's just us two today. Uh, this is not the next part of the D and D series. Unfortunately, not. Donovan could not be with us today for mysterious circumstances him. yeah okay well, i was gonna try to keep it vague but sure nah he has incriminate us on listen this. listen donovan has an ability well since he didn't used to be real um and the power of the grandmother or the fairy godmother from shrek 2 is so powerful that he wants to be a real boy right that was his wish That's so right. if he ever ceases to exist and then no longer be physically real the wish takes effect again so he basically he can respawn. Huh. That's gotta be He's so he's like immortal. That's depressing. I'm pretty sure he can end it if we beat Trek three. That is true. He can or he will. I don't know, I haven't talked to him about it. Have you? No, no, I guess we'll just have to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. I should actually get to buying that game on Amazon, just since now I got money currently. Get it on Xbox. Oh wait. Yeah. Xbox or GameCube? That way we don't need a multi-tap. It might be on the Wii. I think it's on multiple, isn't it? Wait, I have a... Um, Maybe. I have actually a, a list on my notes section. Really? Yeah. A list of what? A list of all the Shrek games. <laughs> Let me just... I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything less from you. Let's see. Want to see some church notes I took from a while ago? Sure, yeah. I don't see, but here, I am like a Lego. We are connected. That was number one. Um, then there's a side note. You can only impart what you possess. Number two, we are stronger together. And number three, we've been given instructions. So, huh. you can assume. But there we go. Shrek video games. So, we got Shrek on the Xbox and it's like updated version on the GameCube called Shrek Extra Large. You're right, it is on the Wii. We got Shrek the Third on the Wii. Yeah. Shrek Forever After on the PS3. Yeah. Puss in Boots on the PS3. Shrek the Third is actually also on the PlayStation 2. But then but that would be better because it wouldn't have motion controls. We have to suffer. That is true. Um, Puss How in many Boots players? on PS3. Shrek Super Slam on GameCube. Shrek Super Party on GameCube. Shrek Smash and Crash Racing on GameCube. I believe Shrek the Third is... Four player Shrek One, I believe, is first player. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to find it here. And on the speed run for Shrek One, there's a fart skip, so you can actually do a fart to skip a part of a level. That's right. I think I remember that from somewhere. It doesn't even say on the wiki like how many I think I told players you. it's got to be. Years ago. And I think we might have figured that out during the game. Well, it's four player. I remember looking it's it been up. A while. Okay. And I remember the first one not being it. The other ones are up in the air. Which is all to be present. Yeah. So we don't have a topic necessarily for... Sorry, I'm looking at a note. What's the note of? I think improv. No, 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 no. Oh, that was for a theater. Um, but during the pan when the before cooties happened, uh -huh. we had an instruction to make a game for class, and so it was uh, a physical game with specific rules, a clear objective, and there must be a winner. It could be played by individual pair, or there could be an individual pair or group winner. Um, there must be objective and rules. We have to verbally explain the game and demonstrate. We got to teach the game, compete it. Ask if it's engaging. Does it get harder or does it help with acting? If so, how? We basically got to make like an improv or theater game. I see. I see. Um, which is fun. <laughs> yeah. What? Is this notes from you? Outside window on ledge a bird. Falcon turned reptilian floor? Is that from a... What? I what? created that on March 4th, 2020, so I don't think it's from you. Probably not. 
uh is are those like game instructions or like for you to have on the side like okay where do i go now okay the window to the reptile i don't know but i wrote down D D notes resurrection purification ritual cleans damned to souls and resurrects death knights and then they pass on oh that's because in game my father nail nail stoneheart's father who it's in our group it's been memes that he he apparently he looks like fabio uh-huh. um he's a death knight so we have to cleanse him oh that's fun yeah, he's killed me your own character has killed you no Fa- <laughs> oh fabio has killed fabio me. has killed me okay Okay, that makes more sense. <clears throat> so, um, the thing I was going to bring up to you, and then I was like, let's wait for the podcast. So today you go, you're you all just going to hang out with us. We're going to obviously talk about D&D, because that's our favorite, one of our favorite hobbies. Favorite it, hobby? It it has kept me sane for about two years now. So, I'm going to say not two years. Uh, almost two years. Yeah, almost. Since... Yeah, about a year, ten months now. It's just kept me sane. Cause I, I keep it at like January twenty twenty. That's when you make the first character, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, now let's figure out everything about them before we've even discussed the like how to play. I think you actually did it in December. <clears throat> oh, I know at least Amanda started hers yeah. in December. Yeah, I started my initial stuff on the character. On New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, when we had that sleepover. And then we expanded on it a bit when I think Nathan was Nathan and Valerie and you were at my house Mm -hmm. for one reason or another. We played Borderlands that day. Was that that day? I think so. Because I'm I'm remembering us in here in this garage playing the Harry Potter scene it. Yeah. That that and the Borderlands thing, I think were too different. Yeah. Because the Borderlands also included Z and then Denise coming in later. Mm. And then Amanda was there too. Mm. But I think like just us there was, I think it was that Borderlands day. Borderlands is a fun game. It is. It was really fun when we played it that one time. And I just haven't been able to play it since. Well, you don't own it. I do. No, I do not. Well, I do own it on <laughs> technically. I own Borderlands 2 on the PS3, the Switch, the PS4, and the PC, and the PlayStation Vita. Wow, you're really covering your bases here. Yeah, you know, I just, I don't own an Xbox 360 or one, so don't have it on those. Yeah. Oh, darn. Uh, We'll get there, though. (laughs) (laughs) One day. One day we'll pay for it all. No, but yeah, so I guess since 2020 has been, since you've been super into D&D. Yeah, since I've really been like, okay, this is the thing to do now. All right, let's go into it. And then pandemic hit, really got into it. And now it's just on my mind too much. But yeah, so uh, is... continue. So there's a new book that came out. Uh, Fizbin's Treasury of Dragons. Which is part bestiary or bestiary, um, part player options, and also part lore. And apparently, there's a chapter that details the first world, a lost singular progenitor to the multiverse of D&D. It was created by the dragon gods Bahamut and Tiamat, and then populated by both chromatic and metallic dragons. Afterwards, gods from the outer planes invaded the first world and populated it with their own creations, the mortal humanoid races such as elves, dwarves, humans, goblins, and orcs. So, it establishes dragons as indigenous to the material world, or plane, yeah, and puts all other creatures technically as colonizers. Even like other gods? All the gods. The myth notes that Tiamat went on a rampage after the first world was invaded and has subsequently been imprisoned in the Nine Hells in defeat. Makes note of Sarador, the strategic deity of gem dragons. He was the first... Okay, so I guess I'll, I'll also a lot of the prime... Prime as in first, or primal as in first. Dragons being <clears throat> essentially coming to godhood. Or being gods later on. Because, you know, they'd be super ancient. Really, 
uh, makes you think of like what it like a uh, being a god in the D and D universe is like an interesting thing because there's Ismodius who's technically called a god, but he's also an arch devil, and so a, a god seems to just be a name for a super powerful entity that has specific like specific powers because uh in spoiler for critical campaign 2 our tagon is the traveler so then he has deity like powers because he's an arch fey that's true hmm maybe so it's guess... like asmodeus was just the first arch devil well he used to be an angel so that's below god and then he got pow more powerful and he became a god and then there's like Funnily enough, the two endings to Critical Role seasons are a mortal being trying to ascend to godhood and being successful in certain degrees until, of course, imprisonment or defeat. Yep. So I can't wait to see in Campaign 3 what one character, what one mortal is going to attempt to become a god. Yeah. Because that seems to be a... Uh, yeah. Well, technically, Vecna trend. was like... Vecna wasn't really just a guy walking around. He was a lich, right? Yeah, at that point he was like a lich. But then it's like... Because like when you get to lich, that's not really a mortal. I guess what you mean. But you know you know what I mean. Like for his journey started <clears throat> yeah, to as him being like... a simple wizard. Exactly, who went yeah. to school, didn't yeah. get along with the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I want to blow up this school with my undead army. I want to be somebody. But, like, I want to be dead. Anyways, so I brought up that story because it's cool because... He got bullied by a, a, a groomsh, <laughs> that uh, that orc god. By the grunch? Yeah. Did you see the uh, History of Exandria video they released? I did. That, that was, was really just, cool. Yeah. I like, don't remember a lot of the details off the top of my head, but I love the narration. Because I love yeah. that Mercer. Yeah. And then the animation was really cool. I didn't know it was different artists. Yeah, no, they're all just, yeah, that was really nice because that's like one of the comments said, like, that's every DM's dream to just like get to talk about their settings lore, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I know, I know probably we both have some stuff boiled down in here and one day we'll find someone like, oh, you're not in our campaign, but like, you're interested in what I made. All right, then, <laughs> you know, usually other DMs, um, yeah. But yeah, I brought that up because in my original D and D world that I created with my friends, uh, we made a thing where it's like, oh, dragons are like the top shit um, at, uh, on this mortal plane, or at least technically this continent. Yeah. That's and usually how a, it's been. Yeah, it's like, and there was a war with the dragonborns and all that stuff. Yeah. And I had a whole thing where the gold were targeted. Um, it was basically a dragonborn race war, <laughs> where there was sides. Um, and there's some who allied with the golden because they're like, why are we attacking them? Hold on, you guys are out of line. I'm going to defend them, which turned into, okay, I guess. And then the other side's like, if you're not with me, you're against me. And they're then like, you are my enemy. And we're like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Only a chromatic deals in absolutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was actually probably funny. It's probably uh, funny. My creation story from that world is that it's totally based on dragons. So it's nice to see that that now we have an official D and D progenitor fucking world made of dragons. Also, you know what's funny? You don't do you know you don't know about Pathfinder lore, right? Not necessarily, no. Pathfinder lore, they don't have a Feywild. Instead, they have something what's called the First World. So take uh, the their planet that Pathfinder takes place on. You know they only have one. They have Galarian. Um, I mean, there's more planets when you get to Starfinder, but um, like the base planet where all their campaigns take place on is called Galarian. And, um, and so they have a shadow plane. So they have a shadow fell more or less, but they have the first world, which is the God's first attempts at making a, a world on the material plane. Oh. And it was too chaotic. And there originates gnomes and elves and other fey like races. Um, and then they carried over on to, the material plan when they scrapped it or i guess they didn't technically scrap it they just shifted it and then they put galarian there instead um i don't i haven't read much 
on the lore, so if I got anything wrong there, just know that I mainly know about that the first world existed. Um, because it's in Pathfinder 2 lore, and it takes place in the same world. It's technically a sequel in terms of... There's some story where, like, you know how in D&D 4th edition there was a spell plague? I don't know how familiar you are with... So there's a spell plague. Um, and in, like, Pathfinder 2nd edition, there's, like, a major disconnect, I think, from the gods... Um, so that you know, it's a sequel in terms of there's more lore, there's more stuff happening on Galarian, and oh, follow our own campaign settings and that stuff. So, hmm. both uh, both games have like a quote unquote like first world, and I think the Feywild makes sense. Like that's a cool interpretation of the Feywild, just a chaotic mess of yeah. Uh, we need to put more order in this nature. Yeah, all right, let's move on over here and just kind of leave this here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we sure we can grab those elves yeah. and gnomes kids. They'll they'll have fun. Yeah, they're like the most orderly of all of them. Mm-hmm. We'll just open doors so that others can like walk into and be like, oh, what the heck is this place? <laughs> they, he looks like me. He just has longer ears, said the halfling. And then a human to an elf. Oh, he looks like me. He just got longer ears, maybe slightly different eyebrows and a slightly darker eye color. Yeah. Or more opaque. More whole. I think elves have more of a full color eye right like they don't have an iris necessarily or that's some depictions i don't know yeah some it can go either way it just depends on your perspective on what elves should look like i always just go half elves so i don't want to deal with the character that basically lives for centuries yeah i don't know why nobody really goes for elf these days because like elf is elf is nice you yeah, know? They don't sleep. Yeah, they, they don't meditate s- for four hours. Yeah, they meditate, which means that they're technically still knocking around. You know, you automatically get proficiency in perception, which Do is you really yeah. As a, as an elf, you just automatically get that. Whoa. And then and you get immunity to poison. Yeah, you get immunity to poison, and like you just are proficient in get I think like by spells. certain types of weapons and stuff. Like, I think, like, short sword, short bow, long bow, and long sword, you're just automatically proficient in. Kind of like with dwarves. Uh, you can be like, oh, you're just automatically proficient in, in battle axe. So don't even worry if you're, like, a wizard. Because mm-hmm. you can hit stuff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Like, elves and dwarves are, like, the pro- like the progenitor races normally. The progenitor humanoid races you got both of them coming in, and then usually humans are the newer ones. I think um, in my lore, I don't, at least on Fimbra, I don't remember if I gave um, one, put one more in place over the other. Because Fimbra is definitely has a thing where it's not the first world. There is more to it, but I guess we'll get on that another time. But yeah, so what did you think of... Uh, Quidical Wall Episode 1. Th- campaign 3, Episode Uno. Wow, well, it's now one of those. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very excited to explore more of Marquette. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a place that hasn't been tapped into. Kind of like how, like, Southern Tal'Dorei and then in Wildemount, they re- didn't really go, like, super east. Because I know there was, like, more stuff over there. But uh, they didn't never went to Port Tamale. Like, it, it was a prominent thing in, like, both campaigns, but just, like, they've never gone to Port Tamale, except I think they did once in campaign two, but it was just, like, a leeway to for a teleportation. They were just like, poof, we're here. All right, here's the oh, thing. For we're going to go now. They went to the, uh... Fudge. I just try to think of this. I called it the Cerberus Assembly on accident. Cobalt Soul? Cobalt Soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but that I'm, campaign yeah i'm interested to see like jungles and like mount jagged mountains and deserts as just like your general layout instead of just the usual forests. yeah that, be... I, that's why i kind of liked when they were in jorhas for a time they had the jor house yeah you know which I, they still have yeah i still go back to like the first episode they really went into jor jorhas and they're like going to the city of beasts 
in like Matt's descriptions about like the war tortoises and the giant gorilla things around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, this is such a mood setter. <laughs> like, this is so cool. <laughs> like, I want that as part of something. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Yeah, so back to campaign three. Uh, also, full spoilers for campaign three things. Mm -hmm. Starting now. One, two, three. What is this? A crossover episode? Exandria Unlimited people, Dorian, Orm, and Fern, join up with a, a much older Bertrand Bell from that one shot. Well, two shot, because he was also in the search for Bob. Oh, but did he play as both? Yeah. Nice. He did. It was more Grog than Bertrand. Of course, just like I'd be more Scanlan than Terry. Exactly. But yeah, so they're hanging out with uh, Laura and Marisha, who have or now a human sorcerer named Imogen, I think. Mm -hmm. And then race unknown warlock sorcerer. For Marisha. Yeah, I, I, I'm blanking on the name. I apologize. Oh, it was... Uh, it was... Laurel? Lorem? Lorid? Maybe. Pull up the wiki. I'm pulling it up. We'll be back after this commercial break. Yeah, Laudna. Laudna. Yeah. And there's also Taliesin, who's playing uh, Ashton, who's, you know, he's cool. He's an Say earth, it. earth genasi barbarian. Say it. And then Fresh Cut Grass. No, 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 no. Okay. Say what you said about Ashton earlier. Taliesin is playing Ashton. No, 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 no. Before, I think you said it in between Moontown episodes. You said he was. Oh yeah, he is. He's literally a punk rock, because he's an Earth Genasi, and he's just some punk kid with a big hammer, and rages all the time. And of course, everyone's now favorite Sam's character, Fresh Cut Grass, who has a small automaton on a wheel. Happy day to you. Yeah, he's like he's like a he's like a Southern claptrap. <laughs> That's what I. Yes, you get it. <laughs> I'm glad you at least remember who Claptrap is. Yeah, I, I know him because I watched conversations from that one game, Poker Night 2. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's looking to be very interesting. I think this, I don't know, I'm, Austin probably doesn't feel the same way. But I think just the AXU people and Bertrand, that's just a temporary thing. Because if then later on like next year or something they're like okay we'll do more of exandria unlimited now you're all level 15 because these three characters stuck with you through marquette throughout this entire campaign so far so i think that and bell are going to be temporary and just those four start to go out and then just in that next episode the other characters kind of come in as they're making their way hmm and then we can get to like, oh, cool jungles and like guest stars. What? Who? Who knew he liked D and D? A what? Yeah. That sort of thing. I uh, I'm on the opposite camp. I think that's, I think that's our party for campaign three. Mm. Um. It'll be an interesting one. I'm always I'm always saying like, for critical role, it takes until. Like, the party doesn't fully, fully set in until, like, the 20s in the episodes. Where it's like... That is true, because we've gotten... even in Campaign 1, like, the Whitestone arc happened in the mm -hmm. 20s. And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, Tyre... No, not that's not his name. Tiberius leaves... Tiberius Stormwind! Of Draconia. <laughs> yes. Uh, he Dude. leaves, so, like, it's just that seven. It's like, oh, cool. Is Draconia on... Uh... It's Taldore? No, no, it's I think it's in Southern Wildmount. No. Southern or Northern Wildmount. Gotcha. And it's just like this city, it's somewhere in the snow and mountains. That's just nothing but Dragonborn. Yeah, now it's yeah. Oof. Remember when they went there? Oh yeah. Sad. That was sad. Yeah. Oh man. You kinda of forget about the guy. But then in the campaign two in the twenties. You know, Molly dies and Caduceus comes in. And it's like, okay, now we're 
now we're cooking with gas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yasha just needs to finish up her stuff, and then all right, now we're good. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Ashley Johnson wasn't really regular until like yeah the ninety a number like episode ninety something. Yeah, no, after right after the Oban stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and and now she's gonna be as far as we know a full campaign regular thank goodness. in this one yeah because ashley johnson's great and fern is amazing i haven't watched Alexandria unlimited no one no one watches these so they don't care i but like, i do and it's it's a lot of fun you're no one well yeah so i don't care about your opinion but i do want to watch it after i finish yeah. campaign two which i'm almost done with okay <laughs> yeah all right who's uh all right Let's. I, I've decided. I've come across a topic. How far are we in? Oh, we don't know. No idea. <laughs> we are seven seven nine point. Nope. Seven eighty point. Nope. Seven eighty one point. Nope. nope. Okay. Seven eighty two point. <laughs> nope. Seven eighty three point. Nope. Um, I can only assume. Maybe thirty minutes. I think thirty minutes has gone yeah. by. Here, let, let's take a little commercial break. Another one or a real one this time? Yeah, a real one. The first one, and it will be back for you. So stay tuned. Dusty Sky, fashion and action. Dusty and Sky, you can pretend they just got back from tennis and swimming, and now they're getting ready for a party. You can also buy other Dusty outfits, where you see this display. Dusty and Sky, you're beautiful. The Dusty Tennis Sports Set, Sky and all accessories sold separately from Kenner. Put your two hands out for a dig em smack. Dig em. Watch a bowl appear like that. Kellogg's Sugar Smack. Dig em. Toast the wheat on a smack and good breakfast. Kellogg's Sugar Smack. Dig em. Hi, Dad. Morning. Hey, what's that frog doing? Deep sea diving. How deep is it? Knee deep. <laughs> Kellogg's Sugar Smack. Dig'em. Make a part of your good breakfast. Kellogg's Sugar Smack. That's a dig'em smack. Who's the McBunniest hamburger clown? Who knows where good food can be found? Hamburger shakes and fries. Lay a fish and apple pies. Ronald. Ronald McDonald. Now everyone can get new Happy Cups at McDonald's. Four in all, each with an action picture of Ronald McDonald or one of his friends. Come into McDonald's and start your set of McDonald Land Happy Cups. They're free when you order a medium soft drink. This week's character is Grimace. And we're back, everybody. Ow. What? Did you get hurt? I was away from you for too long. It's okay. It was just it was just a commercial. Don't do that to me again. <laughs> what do I tell them, folks? <laughs> There's probably going to be needing a a second commercial. <laughs> Let's just not tell them right now. We'll wait and see. Who are you talking to? Uh, nobody. So uh, you were saying, Ugh. Uh, who is your favorite character from Campaign One, and then who is your favorite character from Campaign Two? You need to just shut up. <laughs> Son of a mother possible. Yeah, that's a hard question because for me I feel like my favorite character changed. Yeah. It really does. Oh man. At least uh, at least top three. Because there's like eight of them. That's true. I have to say so far, mm. I think uh Laudna is gonna be my favorite Marisha character. Already. I just think she plays that comedy very well yeah and i liked keyleth and i liked Bo, but i liked him a lot when i said like when it was 20 episodes in and it's like okay i kind of get the character now and there's like more depth and arcs to this yeah okay yeah so campaign one uh scanlon gotta be on there uh i think Vax is another one. Which one? Vax. Vaxeldon? Yeah. And then it's either Grog or Pike that share that third spot. Do you want to know my top three? Yeah. Scanlan, 
Oh, shit. Actually, wait. Ooh, you I forgot about Percy, didn't you? No, 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 no. I can give you my top four. And there's a reason why. I was just like, oh, no, I forgot. Scanlan, Tarion Darrington, Grog, and Vax. I, so throughout the beginning of the campaign, Vaxeldon was my favorite. Because also, uh, Liam, when I, cause I was watching Critical Role Campaign 1. Liam's like the best actor there. Can we just say that? It's like, I think uh, they're all really good. Um, yeah, they're all really good. But like, I literally think though, like who it was the in the top uh, sitting row it was like Liam. It was Liam. The top row was Liam, Liam, Laura, and Travis. Right. Yep. Those were like some of my three favorite voice actors of all time. So, and like I've heard a lot of their stuff, and like I I honestly think Laura Bailey might be the most talented person in that room probably dude she is a her range is amazing there's characters i go that's laura bailey holy smell like risa i don't know i don't know you know i don't think you know persona 4 but i didn't know risa kuchikawa was laura bailey until i saw it and i was like oh my god that's incredible she doesn't sound like herself at all yeah, uh, i think I mean, she... they all have incredible talent and stuff unfortunately i haven't heard a lot of talison or marisha's work um, but when I went into Critical Role, I knew everyone about those two. Yeah. Um, but, like, it is kind of weird because, like, now you do know their work. You know mm-hmm. them as, like, Percy and Keyleth and Caduceus and mm-hmm. Bo and stuff. All right. So, so, like, technically you do. Yeah, I do, technically. But, but like, but... in terms of the voice work. Yeah. Well, Percy and Keyleth might are going to be diving into voice work because of, like, the show. Mm-hmm. Let's continue. So... In the beginning stages, my favorite two characters were Vax and Scanlan. And then it turned into Scanlan and Grog. And then it turned into Terry and Darrington and Grog. So I think in the early parts of the campaign... Vax was my favorite. Scanlan was my second favorite. And then I think at one point Scanlan became my first... Because I love Sam Regal. Yeah. Scanlan became my first favorite. And then Grog started becoming way funnier. Um, You'll notice my favorite characters are probably, I think, the funniest. Um, And then... I, I freaking love Tarion Darrington. I have on record said I might have liked him more than Scanlan... I definitely like Terry more than Endgame Scanlan. But like overall Scanlan, I'm not sure I can make that call. But I think my actual top three will be Scanlan, Terry, and Grog. Because Grog, if I like the middle to end of that campaign, flippin' amazing. I think Travis really started having a way more fun towards the end. Um, my friend Matt Matthew Lee, um, Percy's his favorite, like, critical role character of all time he loves percy's speeches. that's a good choice yeah, yeah percy is really choice, but like if i'm going to why i liked vax it was the edge but also i love liam o'brien um ted if i was in a top five i'd put vex in there because i i wanted to be good nail is what he was going to be a path he's a pathfinder character he's going to have two favorite classes because you can have two that's gonna be ranger and rogue because i love vex and vax so much mm-hmm. um but yeah, so I love Vaxel Don. I also just, he was cool. And then he was like, I thought his arc kind of got repetitive to a bit. So then I love, Scanlan's just fucking hilarious. Um, he's a sad boy. And I like, I liked his arc and then he had a daughter and I thought that was interesting. And then Grog, I think, has had an interesting intellectual battle. And I think some of the sweetest moments of that campaign or when Pike was teaching him to read and write. That was the greatest. That was beautiful. And then he'd go, Ooh, my little monster. And she'd go, Ooh, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. Um, I thought that was always beautiful. And so, and then Terry's relationship with Vex and Keyleth, I loved that so, so much. They opened a bakery together. <laughs> That's so fun. That's just like something they do. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, my highlights for Scanlan are the Meat Man. Highlights for Tarion is his entire existence. Um, and then my highlight for Grog is especially the near the middle and end of the campaign when he just accidentally screws up in a town and they have to cover it up like when him and terry killed i think I, yeah. they accidentally killed a guard right yeah they accidentally killed like two guards <laughs> yikes but uh your yeah. campaign one top three? Oh, you already did that so yeah who, okay you gave me your top four but could you narrow down to top, top three right about now no i gave you my top three. Oh no that's true i gave you the top four shoot Okay. Nuts. <laughs> okay. Okay. So number three, Vax, would be for me. Uh, number two would be... Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's really hard to choose between Grog and Pike. Because they, like, they just... They complete each other, you know? <laughs> I think I think I'll just say Grog because like Travis was around more than Ashley. Mm -hmm. So I think if Ashley was around more, to be a, she'd Pike would be like up there. Mm -hmm. But she's she's beautiful. They're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. And number 1 I think would be Scanlan. It's cuz I really enjoyed all I really enjoyed uh opposite of you the post Terry and Scanlan was just fun to see interesting to like what he can accomplish now and just what he's been up to and this whole mystery of what he's been up to and him trying to like reconcile with his two best friends is just very nice and then when him and grog go out in vasselheim and do another one final crazy thing together it's like oh that just like this patched things up for me it's nice uh yeah, it's a lot of fun. I hope I hope in the show when it gets to like season two or three, when they're just like jumping into planes of existence, mm. that they just like do it and not explain too much. Just like, oh no, yeah, we're we're in the elemental plane of fire right now. Like what? what? We're in the city of brass. Yeah. Like we don't like they could just be a real quick okay, for the viewers that are not involved with D and D, there are multiple planes of existence. We only need to go through a couple. But, like, that's just so you know where we are. I mean, if they're going to do the Legend of Akhmakin, they have to do the Plan of Fire. They have to do the Feywild. Feywild, yeah. They have to do the think. Nine Hells. Which one? The Prison that, Layer, right? Yeah, in the City of This. City of This. Oh, yeah, and then you get the, the bear girl. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Tova. Tova. Yeah, and then... Uh, Bits and pieces in the shadow fell at the end of it. Uh, I don't remember that at all. Very quick stint with a kraken in the plane of water. True. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. And then I think uh, that's it. Technically, pandemonium f with the search for grog and search for Bob. Oh, and maybe one of the upper realms when they meet. Uh, right, because yeah, Isilium. They meet gods. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Isilium. I believe Elysium. You mean Elysium? Yeah. Do they go to? Is it Elysium they go to? Yeah, it's Elysium. I think they go for like they, that. Really, Saren Ray like, and Pelor, probably. Yeah, that really is like campaign one. Really, just is like the typical fantasy hero D and D like level one to twenty campaign where it's like yeah we go to other planes of existence yeah because like my we plan for your campaign is there's several like I plan for you guys to go to at least a couple. Yeah. Just for fun, you know? And murder. Yeah. Like, I I don't have, like, plans to send you off into, like, the elemental plane of Earth. Like, if you want... No, that, that I, that's not a plan I have. That's just a random example. No, but no one ever thinks about the Earth plane. Yeah, they've got the City of Gems, oh, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, if you guys want to step over there, like, Just get we want to go to the Plain of Mud. <laughs> like, all right, then. Oh, yeah, and then there's the... Uh, there's the there's yeah, there's, the like, the Middle planes. planes. Yeah. Those are cool. I like whoever designed that. The... Ooh, what do we call that? It's not the wheel. Is it the Great Wheel? No, the Great Wheel is, like, all of the planes. That's the 5v1, right? 
Yeah, but like there's a smaller wheel inside of that. Yeah, the inner planes. Yeah, the inner planes, where it's like the material. No, I know. Using visuals <laughs> here, Feywild, Shadowfell, and then around that yeah, is the, the elemental, elemental planes, and then connecting them all is the astral plane. And then it's all over and then it's just the elemental chaos. Yeah. And then just the, streams out of there. But Well, it's the ethereal plane, and then the astral plane connects to the upper planes. Because that's how you get to That's it. right. That's right. Yeah. That's what I thought. I've uh, I've done a lot of reading on the planes. I wish that part of the DM's book was bigger. I know. It's just like, some planes only have like this much description. Yeah, it's like, dude, like, give us like... Give me a whole book. Yeah, let's just give us like a multiverse book. That'd be amazing. That goes in depth, and you don't have to, like, look it up or make stuff up on your own. Which, like, you kind of do have to. Like, I invented, like, yeah. <laughs> you'll find out, something special that takes place within both the what borders the ethereal and astral plane. Like, I have something cool that's there. Um, But... If we'll ever get to it. Yeah, uh, you better. No, you don't really have to. Um, But it's like my my in my what I, what you envision there is literally a my like it's cloudy and it's like if you think about those areas in like dark souls or kingdom hearts when it's like sky and sea reflections it's ooh it's so weird <laughs> you know it's like i don't cuz i don't have much to go on like what i don't know what the astral plane fucking looks like <laughs> Like, you kind of, like, kind of looks like space. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the ethereal, it's just gray mist, and it's over this plane. At least and in the border spooky. ethereal. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> but yeah. we're getting off topic. Yeah, there are little bits of history I found just looking through the monster manual. Like, when it goes into, like, the Aesir, like, the dwarf guys with the fire heads, mm-hmm. and then the salamanders. Mm-hmm. It does go in a little bit in the description of, like... The Azir and the Afridi being at war with each other, some salamanders being like slaves to the Afridi, mm-hmm. in like a never-ending fight with the Azir. Somebody looks looks like they're looking at a lot of fire monsters. Should I be concerned? Oh uh, no, it was more just like that means yes. Well, because I was just like reading it, I was reading stuff for the Azir. I was like, oh, it does mention the salamanders. I wonder if it's in here. Yeah, no, it's continuity. All right then, cool. But, I don't know. Where were we? Oh, that's right. So, let's try to both say yeah. our favorite Campaign 1 character at the same time. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Scanlan. <laughs> Great. Campaign 2? Yep, moving on. Ooh, before that, any uh, characters and any of the one-shots that you really liked? Ooh, let's if see. you remember them. I remember them. I go back to search for Grog a lot. I have uh, watched that once. Uh, I'm a fan of Bertrand. Bertrand's cool. Yeah, Bertrand's fun. Uh, poor, poor Liam just can't yeah. play a character that knows the Raven Queen. No, he, he can. No, I mean, like, he can, but, like, they're going to die. That is true. Uh, yeah, Leo Again. Tell. Again. Again. <laughs> yeah, Leo Tell was one. Uh... Derek is who Liam played in the Dalen's Closet one shot. Mm-hmm. It was just like a battle, like an older Orm mm-hmm. with like, he had, I think he had like four kids, which is nice. Like, oh, all right then. Uh, That's kind of it for really the one shot. I like. Oh, the, I really like going Darren, back. The Darrington Brigade one. I like Grog's character. Oh, you have the Darrington Brigade. The one that talks like that. At uh, Macaroni Samsonite. I haven't finished that episode, that one shot. You have to. It is. It's so fun. That one's great. Uh, I guess Lylana doesn't really count. Uh, what was I going to say? Hmm. Oh, yeah. I go back Honey to. Heist. I've only seen the first one, but I love I haven't Matt seen that Mercer yet. as Trinket. Yeah, I gotta get to that one. Mm. Mm. Uh, I like going back to the uh, battle royale they had with Fox Machina at mm. like their highest levels, and like near the like the middle end of it. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like Grog is on this tower with like one hit point left, 
covered in acid because Keela turned into a black dragon. Mm-hmm. And so Travis is like, standing there, I will pull out the deck of many things. And he was like, how many cards do you want to pull? And he's just like, five. <laughs> and he pulls five cards. Nothing explodes or anything, but I'll leave you to go check that out. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and tell, of course, Talison is like, yes, I'm so proud of you. It's like, he's not going to even be there to deal with it. Exactly. <laughs> Dude. That's oh, so yeah. sad. The uh, Vox Machina versus Mighty Nine battle. Oh, yeah, that was that was like a fun one. From the setup, it was skewed yeah. towards Mighty Nine. Because the Vox Machina ones weren't exactly the ones that go up and hit things all the time. Yeah, but, I mean, they're scary. They got, like, four or five vestiges between true, themselves but they were also de-leveled that is true because they would have been level 20 that would have been that would have been and an m9 would have been 15 yeah but there's going to be a part two probably with uh the, oh with the switch with the opposite yeah with grog keyleth and vex versus caleb uh caleb caduceus and yasha and then i think what they're gonna do is have sam be the in-betweener as switch... scanlan or terry no it's terry or veth terry or oh that's right terry yeah. or veth i think that's what they're gonna do with her or with him that'd be an interesting fight yeah be... they might they might just give them veth <laughs> because you're dealing with keyleth that is true and grog fuck yeah that's so scary yeah, but Caleb and Caduceus can do some crazy stuff, and we get we'll get to see Yasha versus Grog. <gasps> we'll get to see that. I would like to rage. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> so would I. That would be that'd be really cool. That would be fun. So I'm gonna readjust myself. Yeah. Here. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be right back after these uh, commercial breaks. Uh, Stay tuned as we discuss more things. Uh, And we're back. We're back to talk about... I said don't do that to me again. I'm going to do it and you're going to... You're going to take it. No. There's no other way I could say it without like sounding weird because it's like you're gonna take it you're gonna love it you're gonna like it daddy show me the keyhole (laughs) that's where's the keyhole daddy where's the keyhole daddy i'm glad you remembered yeah so uh top three characters in campaign two yeah campaign two i have a stronger connection with because that's the first one i went to and that's Mm -hmm. the one that like i've stuck around with more Mm -hmm. it's like that's my group Mm mm-hmm uh just like going off the top of my head not going into like top ones yet you know i i really like ford Uh uh-huh i really like his journey and stuff it's interesting i haven't seen yet any of them play a character that starts off as a paladin that's right they just level up into it later yeah (laughs) which sad for me because i'm like come on it's me i started off as a paladin you should too suck it yeah because like i mean early level paladins when you get them i know from experience right now it is game breaking (laughs) sometimes not all the time i should say because my stats are probably not the essential stats for a paladin person listen i just can't kill you guys i know i'm not technically trying to but it's sad Try to once in a while. See what happens. I did during the ellipse fight. All right, then. And then during that last encounter, Little Brook. Pretty sure you felt it. Right, yeah. The pressure. Yeah, I know. The pressure did help, out, I almost outright killed you if if they all would have hit. Yeah. But Flins are scary. Crazy high AC for me is pretty good. <laughs> yep, you little bastard. Yeah, Flynn, jeez. You just you threw that at us. Yes, I did. Didn't even but, really need him on there. Probably he definitely not. helped out, but... Teeny bit. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, he was the Essek in that fight. Probably, yeah. He was the wizard friend that's there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? Uh, but yeah, Ford is a lot of fun. Caduceus is just wonderful to just listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God, it's so hard because like I'm more invested in all of the Mighty Nines like backstories and journeys than I was for Vox Machina. And, like, Vox Machina was just crazy. I should point out, I don't know if it's, like, a snot or something, but there's just something coming out of you that's, like, it's like a blinker. And I can just see it, like... Is it gone? Here, breathe more. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. It was a little blinker. I'm sorry. That was just, like, it was hypnotizing. It's okay. We got it on camera. That's all we or we got it on a recording. That's all we need. Yeah. It's been yeah. it's it, in the history books now. That is true. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I was a little more into Bo's story than I think you were. Uh, Yasha, when she when she was out, she was out. <laughs> Some great stuff going on with her. And uh, yeah, Not slash Veth was great. Caleb was really good. I didn't really get attached to Molly as most people did. Neither did I. Yeah. Like, he was a fun character, and it was nice to get introduced to the blood blood hunters and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it does feel like if it, if it was scripted out, which it is not at all, like, yeah, <laughs> Molly dies, and then later on, way later on, becomes the, the main villain. <laughs> yeah, that's good material. Yeah. That's like... You really could write that, but they didn't, which is interesting. But I would have loved to see who would who would have been the villain. Yeah, I think Ukutoa. maybe it was always planned to just be Lucian. Maybe, but I think Ukatoa also is like a same kind of world-ending thing because they were afraid of that being put back together. Yeah, Ukatoa, and then like and the then of other two. You have Trent. Yeah, Trent is a big villain, big presence. And especially later on and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Oban was great. That's right, Oban. Yeah, Oban was That was great. a totally different, like, arc. Yeah. Lorenzo's time was short, but pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And, um... Yeah, that's really... It kind of wraps up, like, the bigger villains. Aside from, I guess, like, Avantika. That was more like a... Because of Ukatoa. She yeah. was doing that stuff. Ukatoa. Have you heard the uh, Ukatoa She Shanty? Oh, yes. That's so, so many good. times. It's great. Ukatoa, Ukatoa, keep a locked away. As the serpent rises, tall as many eyes now seeing her. But, who are your favorite characters in Campaign 2? Yeah. All right, then. Here we go. Ah, oh, man. And Chester is just so much fun. Because it's Laura. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Number three, Jester. Number two, Yasha. Number one, Ford. Really? Yeah. We're only going to have one in common. You ready for mine? Go ahead. My number three is... Probably Caduceus. To my two and three, I could go either way, honestly. My number two is Caleb. I love that uh, German. Uh, uh, Zemnian accent. Zemnian accent. Eldritch Blade. Yeah. 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 Uh, my number one is Jester. I love Jester. She's so fun. She's so cool. <laughs> she just does stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, all right, let's move on. I just that's the, probably I think that's the same reason why I loved Scanlan so much was because he just did fun things and he played and he just just having a good time. Yeah, and it's not like that was all there was to them. No, exactly, but like when you're with them for so many hours. Yeah. Um you I love the lore stuff. I love the relationships. Um but a Jester's energy was just like my favorite thing ever. Um, yeah. yeah. Vandran reading Tusk Love was, I think, one of my favorite plot twists. 
<laughs> He's just reading That's Tesla. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. No spoilers, please. No spoilers, please. It's pretty good. <laughs> I also... Uh, That's great. My favorite NPCs, I think, from Oof. season one is Gilmore. That's season one, he says. Gotta love Gilmore. Or campaign one is Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore is just so good. And then campaign two, it's Pumat. Yeah, Pumat Gotta is Gotta love great. those shop, or those shopkeepers, salesmen. Yeah, shopkeepers are great. Oh, hey. How you doing there? How you doing? Oh, oh hey. <laughs> Oh, hey, Pumat, how you doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. I, w- I was actually watching a Pumat's old compilation recently. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just like watching like all of the scenes that he's in. Like, he needs a... Oh, I heard him. <laughs> and just, I love Pumat. He's so cute. He is. Yeah. I love when he meets Cad. Oh, yeah. And, like, each of them are going oh, down, like... Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, look at... Oh, well. <laughs> I don't see a lot of us around here. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, he's... It was really cool. Ah, oh, man. So, what... Yeah. Why, why do you like... What do you like so much about those characters? Let's see. Uh, whoop. That's the microphone. Sorry about that, listeners. Uh, I put Jester up there, of course, because, you know, like Scanlan, she's a character that just embraces the freedom one can have in D&D mm-hmm. to just play around with anything, dramatic, comedic, or otherwise. Mm-hmm. The her relationship with her mom and with eventually her dad is really nice. I like seeing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two being Yasha because like when she was out there she was just so good <laughs> I just really enjoyed her and like I felt that distance between the appear- the first appearance of the laughing hand and her turning quote unquote and then to her coming back and like breaking free of those chains and then just like seeing her seeing her journey after that was I think the biggest highlight? Well, especially like in the underground fight bar. Punch me! Oh yeah, that was great. She scared the fuck out of that yeah, like, out of everybody. <laughs> but yeah, just seeing her journey like after that, like okay, now what? Like now that I've kind of fulfilled my figuring out my past thing, you know, what is it really that I want to do? Because there wasn't really a, a whole lot of knowing what she wanted to do for the vast majority of this campaign and then her figuring that out and getting closer with the storm lord her stuff with Bo, you know just finding herself in that and then like at the very end finally seeing zuala again on that tree was just really great <laughs> but yeah that's why i think she's my number two because like especially after the oban stuff she was just like always terrific to watch. Mm-hmm. And then uh, let me take some lemonade. Lemonade and the easy. Ah, lemonade. Yeah, number one being Ford. Uh, Eldritch Blast. Yeah, I mean, I just I just gravitated towards him early on, for one for the accent, <laughs> because I. I gotta be honest, I didn't really know any of them going in. I had to be reminded that Ashley Johnson was Ellie. But then I was like, no, no, she's Gwen Ten. Oh, well, she's Gwen Tennyson from Ben Ten. Is a- she? She's Gwen? Yeah, from Ben Ten Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, Omniverse. She's Gwen. She's older Gwen? Yeah. I love You're hearing her. that right now in your head? I. That's great. Yeah. I love her. I love Alien Force. Yeah, that's her. That's cool. That was that was three or four years before Last of Us. Damn. Well, I didn't really play a lot of Last of Us. So. I know, but I'm saying like her, that's still even with dope. the big thing of her career. Like, yeah. No, no, she was Gwen first. Dude, that's and, awesome. Oh, she was also the, you know, Recess? I don't remember it, it but I do know it. Yeah, you know what? Uh, she was the girl with the glasses. The ginger? Uh, Yeah, I think it was the ginger. Mm-hmm. She had like the really thin frame with the... Like the oval head and the and the glass and stuff. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that was her too. But Gwen's the most important one. If I ever see her, like, all right, I love Yasha, love Pike, 
But like right now, let's just get Ben 10 out of the way. <laughs> and then we can discuss anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, f- so back on Ford. Uh, I didn't really know any of the char- any of the actors before watching Critical Role. I had to look up later on. Like, okay, like, who would I connect these to? Yeah, you didn't watch anime, so I had a lot more connection yeah, to these no. characters. So I was like, okay, uh, Laura Bailey, who we got? Who we got here? Uh, Omo Chow in one thing. All right, cool. <laughs> Keep with that. Uh, you didn't yeah, know Liam O'Brien. Oh, my my favorite version of Nightcrawler from Wolverine and the X Men. All right. And uh, what was another one like that? Uh, Sam Regal. I was like, oh, Donatello from that super cool Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show. The one with the bam 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 bam. Is that the nineties one? No, no, early 2000s one. I like the 90s one. Yeah. Well, the 90s one, that was just like Rob Paulson, Townsend Coleman. Like, the first Ninja Turtle show. The first animated one? Yeah. Just There's the... a 70s one, isn't there? Note, the first one was late 80s, early 90s. Well, more mid to late 80s. But yeah, that was the first one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I think we were thinking about something else. Maybe I'm also thinking of the early 2000s one. Where they don't have, like... They look like... There would be their masks are like Batman's, where you don't see the eyes. It's yeah, white. like the white people's? Yeah. Yeah, that's the early 2000s one. Oh, I thought that was the late 90s. No, nah, man. It's just because I equate that kind of art style to the Bruce Tim. That's true, thing yeah. the late 90s. So. But no, the big ones were the first one, with Rob Paulson and stuff, then the one I'm talking about. Then, like, after that, the biggest one was the Nickelodeon one. Word. Yeah, I didn't watch anything. After okay, that. Uh, not or, a big turtles guy. Yeah, Rob came back as, but for Donatello, uh, Sean Astin was Raphael in that. Hmm. Yeah, Samwise was just hanging out, and then now it's that crazy newer one with I think Ben Schwartz is one of them. I love Ben Schwartz. Yeah, he's so cool. We should get him on sometime. <laughs> I wonder if he likes Moontown. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, yeah, guys, I love Moontown. Come on. Where was I? Oh, yeah, and I was like, oh, Travis Willingham? Okay, he's Thor in the Lego games my mom and dad always play. I'm like, oh, he's Knuckles sometimes. All right, great. God. You don't know him from some of the most iconic roles. I know. It weirds me out. But... Like, I know him like Liam O'Brien. That's Gara from Naruto. Or for me specifically, I'm like, oh, that's that one guy from Tales of the Abyss. But he talks like this. Hello. Liam O'Brien does such a good uh, effeminate kind of character. So it's like, oh, hello there. Like, I love those kinds of voices. And then, like, like Liam or uh, Travis Wildingham and Laura Bailey are heavily known from Full Metal Alchemist. As oh, I'm sure. Laura being Lust, and then Travis Wildingham being uh, Leon Mustang. Okay. Which he has a very distinct voice when he does Leon Mustang. It's different from his, uh, you know, he, you know, you his hear usual his voices sometimes. Kind of yeah. usual. Uh, Leon's great. Timber. Yeah. Leon also sounds like King Guys, and then Sam Regal's in that game too. So. I could go on about Japanese stuff forever. Yeah, but now to bring it all back, mm-hmm. it's like okay, I've God got created the world. Yeah, <laughs> in the beginning, in the beginning, there was the world. In the in the benin, in the beginning, and the world was with yeah. God, and the world was God. It's like okay, accents cool. I know Travis Willingham from this kind of stuff. Okay, let's go. But it's like in my head, if Grog was never there, just like he's Ford. Like, Ford is more in my head than Grog is, I gotta say. Because I was just, like, with Ford more. You know, I could tell, like, the nuances in the acting. I can tell the specific points in the journey where it changed. The dream stuff really helped out. His whole, like... Oh, I think that stuff was cool, yeah. Yeah, I think, like, before they went to Jorhas, like, Sam made a joke as not... Where Travis is like, maybe we shouldn't go over and find your husband. He was like, what? We spent three months searching for your backstory. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing was crazy and was real fun to see. And just fun to see how like fu- how much fun he was having with spell slots. And he was like, I'm going to drop a Brogura right on her head. <laughs> like, like the descriptions and stuff. Eldritch Blast is great. And uh, is transitioning towards the Wild Mother. And, mm-hmm. like, that being a very clear transition. 
Perhaps maybe with more... or without Caduceus. I wish there was more after that. Cause it kind of just felt like, oh, okay, I'm accepting the Wild Mother, and now the Wild Mother is with me, and I'm gonna talk about it with I talk about it with Caduceus one more time, and then that was kind of it. Hmm. I just wish more people had the same level of. Cad and Jester were good as clerics. I think they both did a fantastic job, like reaching out and connecting to their gods. And I just wish we saw more of that um, in general in D and D. I think we got a lot of it in Campaign One. I think because we had it with like with the Raven Queen. Yeah, with the Raven Queen, we got it with like Saren Ray. We did mm-hmm. get a good amount of interactions with like Pelor and Ayun. I just think it's funny that they had to put in Saren Ray because she's a Pathfinder god, if you didn't know, because um, they played the Pathfinder originally. Yeah. And so that's why... I think I, I learned about that later on. Yeah, initially that's why they didn't put the Tal'Dorei campaign setting in, in uh, 5e. Wizards of the Coasts. They didn't publish it. Right. And they had changed the name of some gods actually in the book to account for any copyright and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting stuff uh, no yeah there was especially like in the end of course campaign one had a lot of god talk oh yeah and then, yeah. And then with campaign two you know it was like the oh, storm lord yeah. sort of more so at the end mm-hmm. because that was more where like yasha was trying to make the connections and then you know the wild mother was in it with caduceus and then like our tagging the boy yeah the traveler technically sprinkler a sprinkler, sprinkler. <laughs> <laughs> but no yeah i just if ford wasn't there probably caleb would be on that top spot because it's liam liam's great liam's fantastic but i mean ford really just like encompasses a good amount of that like sense of adventure and exploration and like making your own compass that the the whole campaign in wild mount really was trying to like cement like the open-mindedness too in wild mount mm-hmm. so i think yeah ford's ford's probably my favorite nice yeah so and then if we ever had this conversation again i can ask you later on about your favorite exu person because oh, you'll yeah. be seeing them and then so on and so forth. Yeah. But yeah, this is kind of just a freestyle one that literally while we were doing it transitioned into something of a topic. So apologies to everybody who doesn't know Critical Role. Yeah, has no idea what we're talking about. But this is an episode we made and we're having fun. So in your face. I think uh, I think that'll do for right now. Mm-hmm. That's all we got today. Uh, thank you for listening, as always. Remember to subscribe and like and comment if you so wish to. You know, it's free. It's easy. And you can cancel out whenever you want. It's true. Just click it once, then unsubscribe. And if you really want to, click it again. Yeah. Be, be that guy. Be that freak. All right. My be thanks to freak. Austin for hanging out. What's up? Hey. And, uh, Wait. When you hit and record, you're going to go away again. I'll never be gone. Is... I feel something in my butthole. No one is alone. It's the universe. The universe is my sphincter. <laughs> Whoa. People make mistakes. Eldritch horrors. <laughs> Feeling they're alone. <laughs> Thinking they're alone. The universe is in an anus. Children will smell it. <laughs> Agony. <laughs> but my painful. life is a bud. <laughs> I'm always down in my dumps. It's a very nice butt. And, and, uh. <laughs> and the universe is big. And no, the butt. The butt? The butt. <laughs> it's firm and it's soft. And, and, when it squeezes, it makes a noise. Mm-hmm. 
out of the butt, into the body, into the water, and now we flush into the sewers. Okay. And so... now we're with the fishes. <laughs> that That's the end of the episode. Yep. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>